Hey all, in this video we're going to write a song in Entrax Studio. So we're going to start by clicking and dragging in the timeline to select a loop range. We'll then enable that with this button. And we'll go ahead and add a track, which is going to be a drum track. So we'll click create a beat. And this adds the Entrax step sequencer where you can see all of the drum parts. Click to add a step. So we'll add some rim shot there, some hi-hat closed hi-hat and also maybe an open hi-hat there in line with the rim shot and we can just go ahead and press spacebar to hear how that sounds okay great and now let's try to make it sound more natural so we can click and drag down to lower the velocity of a sound and this helps because when playing on the pads or on a drum kit not every hit is the same volume okay good so now we can add something else too we'll click on swing the swing button and there's an option here to humanize the beat. And this adds small timing delays to make the parts sound more realistic. Cool, we've already covered beat creation, velocities and humanization. Now let's go ahead and add some keys. So from the main timeline, we'll now add an instrument track and that's gonna show us the instrument browser. So we'll go ahead and add a piano. Steinway Grand Light, perfect. So you can immediately start playing the keys on the screen, but we're going to record in with a MIDI keyboard. This red button lets us hear exactly what we're playing on the keyboard in real time. It's called arming a track and it's been done automatically. And then we can enable record counting to hear one bar of click before you record. Press record and here we go. Okay, nice. Let's listen back to the part now and see if we can use N-Track to improve it at all. That's a bit out of time. Also there. That's out of time with the beat. Okay, great. But as we heard, there are definitely some timing issues and we're gonna go ahead and fix those now by opening the piano roll. And here we can see all of the MIDI notes we just recorded. And from the grid menu, we can choose what subdivision we want our MIDI notes to snap to. So bar, beat, eighth, whatever. Then right mouse click on a note, hit quantize. And that's gonna make the timing of our notes line up perfectly to our grid. Ah, much better, everything's in time. We can click on the edge of a note to make it shorter or longer. Or we can click and drag up or down to actually change the note. So let's put this one up an octave. If we go to the top of the piano roll, we can select the note tool. And this means wherever we click in the piano roll, it will add a note, which we can then drag to make longer as we did before. And if you don't like the note, just double click to remove it. So let's close the piano roll and go back to our timeline. Now we're gonna pan the piano part, which places it left or right in the stereo field and is basically a good way of creating space in the mix. Beat done, keys done, let's record a vocal. So for the vocal, we'll need to add an audio track and this opens armed with the red button active. Let's de-arm the piano track because we don't need to record that anymore. And then if we go to settings, then audio devices, we can choose the device that our microphone is connected to and that we want to record from. So let's make sure that the channel that our microphone is connected to is selected. And then we'll click this live input button, which allows us to hear what we're recording. We'll make sure our count in button is enabled so that we get that one bar of click before our vocalist records. And here she is. So 
So how do we mix the vocal? Well, let's start by switching off live input, switching off the metronome, and listening back to the part. Did you hear that click? There's a click at the start of the part, and we can add a fade to make that smoother. Click and drag to make it bigger or smaller. That's much cleaner. There we go. Also, the vocal is dry and close. So let's add a bit of reverb to add some space and depth. Hear the difference? Let's open the preset list and choose vocal hall. Also, we'll solo the vocal. I like that. So now it's time to add some bass. Exactly as we did with the piano, we'll add an instrument track, but this time we'll click guitars and basses and find a bass instrument. As before, we'll close the sampler and go to the timeline, and then let's remove the part that's added automatically and instead copy and paste our piano part. So why would we do that? Well, let's open the piano roll and find out. Here's our MIDI piano part, but this time let's switch to the Erase tool and then click and drag to remove all of the chords from the piano part, which leaves us with a ready-made bass part. Oops, this note sounds a bit high for a bass, so let's click and drag this guy down an octave. Better. And to take this one step further, we can return to the timeline and use the key widget to transpose the part down another octave. Let's solo the track to hear the difference. Resetting the key widget, we can hear the original and the octave down. Now let's record some live guitar. So let's add a new track, record audio, and we'll choose the same audio input as the vocals. We'll make sure that only our new audio track is armed because we want to record only to this one. We'll set the live input button and check we're hearing the guitar before recording. Our record counting button's already enabled. So let's start recording. So let's mix our guitar track. We can start by naming it. Click and we can type guitar. And let's listen back to our part. We'll turn off live input monitoring and the metronome. Soloing the track, let's add a couple of effects. First, we'll even out the volume level using the compressor default setting. Then we'll clean the sound using EQ. First, we'll locate problem frequencies and then filter them down. Let's add some reverb too. This time by adding a send on the guitar track. Open the mixer and we can see our send called AUX1. We'll solo the AUX track so we can hear it and add the reverb. Move the orb to audition presets. Let's hear without the reverb and with. Choose how much reverb you want to send to the guitar by adjusting the aux knob. Now 
Now our track's fully recorded, let's prepare it for export. First we can see these red clips on the timeline and that the track peaks above zero decibels. If we tried to export the track like this, it would sound distorted and overly loud. So we need to manage it. We can hear the guitars really loud. That has something to do with it. First, let's go to the mixer. We saw that this song was peaking at eight decibels above zero. So let's move the master fader down about eight decibels. Now we'll rerun the scan. Okay, much better. We can see we're basically at zero there. We'll now fix the guitar volume and see what happens. Let's take it down. Okay, much more balanced. Let's rerun the scan. Oh, and we're well below zero, minus seven. The guitar was a massive factor to the clipping. Because we're now quite a lot below zero at minus seven, we could increase the volume of the master fader again. To me, that's all sounding nice and balanced. Let's rerun the scan. We're below zero, but not too much. So we're safe to export the song now and it will have no distortion and no clipping. Let's also give a bit of pan to the guitar, create some more space in the mix. That sounds right to me. Let's check it all together. As a final step for export, let's add a limiter to the master channel. Using a limiter is going to safely boost the overall volume, but also prevent distortion and clipping when exporting the song. So we can locate the master channel in the mixer, but we can also show it immediately by clicking on the timeline below our tracks. Here it is. We'll now click Add Effects, choose End Track, and then select the limiter. From the Presets bar, we'll choose Look Ahead Limiter True Peak. And when the limiter is added with the Look Ahead Limiter True Peak preset, we can increase levels up to the limit without any clipping. <laughs> So let's type minus 0.1 in the gain setting and we can verify in the meter tool that the song peaks at exactly minus 0.1 decibels, staying free of distortion. This allows us to have a good mix and a confident volume level for the export, not too quiet but also not too loud to the point where the mix distorts or clips. And for comparison, let's listen without the limiter. with. Hear the difference? Okay, we're ready to mix down the song. Let's go to File, Mix Down Song. Let's give it a name, say My Mix. And you can choose to save this anywhere on your hard drive, but by default it will be saved in the exported audio folder from the song. From the interval to mix down box, let's choose loop interval. Those are the eight bars that we selected right at the start. We'll process master channel, which has our limiter on it. Bounce out in stereo. 24 bit is good, nice and high quality. We'll check all the tracks are selected. And off we go, press start. Done. We can import mix downs into Ntrack via the loop browser. Let's look at how using the song we just mixed down. Go to My Folders, press the Add icon. The last folder that we used will open by default. That has our track in it, My Mix, but you can select any folder. Click on it and you can see our track is added to the loop browser. So in this way we're just previewing the track, but if we double click, it actually adds it into the song. So lastly, let's solo our mix down and listen to it. And that's it. It's easy to get going in N-Track and we hope this video inspires you to start your next song. <laughs>